Hello, and welcome to America in Focus, powered by the Center Square. I'm Dan McCaleb, executive editor of the Center Square Newswire Service. Joining me today is the Center Square's Washington, D.C. Bureau Chief, Casey Carper. How are you, Casey? Casey Harper here reporting for duty, also known as Casey Harper. Dan, how was your uh, month-long vacation? Oh, trying Tell to, me all about it. Trying to turn the tables on me, Casey. Only one <laughs> of us uh, takes those month-long vacations. I was on a work trip. I don't know. That's not what I heard. That's not what I heard. That's not what your Instagram Bahamas photos said. But I guess I'll, I can let it slip. <laughs> Never been to the Bahamas, Casey. Never. Don't plan to uh, <laughs> either. But why don't we, we have a lot of news to talk about. So why don't we get into that? We are recording this on Friday, July 21st. Casey, there's been a lot of news this week about allegations that uh, President Joe Biden, when he was vice president, and his son Hunter received money from foreign business interests in exchange for their influence, including a bombshell FBI report um, that was released yesterday in which an informant claims that then Vi- Vice President Biden, quote, unquote, coerced a, seven, a several million dollar bribe from Burisma Holdings to protect the company and get a Ukrainian uh, prosecutor investigating Burisma fired. There was also congressional hearings this week with IRS whistleblowers into the Biden investigation. Bring us up to date on everything that's going on here. Well, I mean, yeah, there's so so many big revelations, so many big hearings, as you said. Uh, And really this week, I think, was a major turning point for this Hunter Biden, Joe Biden um, investigation for a couple of reasons. First, uh, what has always in the past been a Hunter Biden investigation with some loose ties to the president has now, in my mind, become a Hunter Biden and President Joe Biden investigation. Based on the evidence we've seen, uh, the IRS whistleblowers say that it was Biden's Department of Justice that interfered on behalf of Hunter Biden to um, protect him in this investigation, right? That Biden's political appointees uh, or his Department of Justice, people working for him, were kind of shutting down and interfering with this Hunter Biden investigation. So that implicates him there if it all turns out to be true, right? course, there's kind of a big allegedly on a lot of this stuff. But and the, the second reason it really beca- has become just as much about Joe Biden as Hunter Biden is uh, this incredible FBI document that you referenced. So it's called the Co- Confidential Human Source or C- it's called the CHS document, right? That's the abbreviation. Law- Federal law enforcement loves acronyms, you may know. So it's the CHS document um, where they have a confidential human source based on the way this document is written up. This a uh, human, the CHS, this source, this informant was very close with Burisma. And actually, it seems like they may have actually worked for Burisma, um, maybe as a consultant or something. It's not totally clear. Uh, but they, Burisma is a very large Ukrainian um, energy company that Hunter Biden worked on the board, right? He worked on the board with him. So, and so here's a, here's a quote from that. Um, the, the, the informant says that Burisma hired the former president or prime minister of Poland to leverage his contacts in Europe for prospective oil and gas deals. Okay, yeah, yeah. And they hired Hunter Biden to, quote, protect us through his dad from all kinds of problems. So that phrase, protect us through his dad from all kinds of problems. Um, So you hear, the, this is an FBI document, the informant saying that Hunter Biden's explicit job was to leverage his father, who was vice president um, during when a lot of this was going on. Uh, and so the, the president has by this FBI document really been implicated. And now it's not so much, oh, sad little Hunter Biden who had a drug problem was being a little sketchy. It's now there's much more hard for and public evidence that the president himself was involved in all this. Right. And that document f- uh, from that confidential human source, CHS, was released by Republicans in Congress, right? The FBI had this yeah. document. Senator Chuck Grassley. Senator Chuck Grassley. Thank you. So it's really Congress uh, Republicans in Congress who have been sort of pushing this in, uh, this investigation in front of the public. The FBI has had this information for a while. So the question is, right. what's the Department of Justice going to do about it? It seems like the Department of Justice uh, has been sitting on this information for, for quite a bit. And it's only, you know, Republicans who are having the, conducting their own investigation that have pushing it and pushing it forward. Is this going to go anywhere with Joe Biden's Department of Justice? Right. I mean, that is a kind of a scary question a sad question because you know more every it seems like you know every few months more evidence comes out showing that the department of justice has become so politicized i mean and not even just the fbi though the fbi in many people's minds is top of that list and we've talked about that a lot on this podcast and written about you know written about it at the center square 
DOJ.gov.com. So it remains an open question if the DOJ is really going to do anything. I think, you know, we saw how, how aggressively they treated, treated um, former President Donald Trump, but then didn't really go after President Biden, even though he had the same classified documents or even Mike Pence had the classified documents. Now, Trump was much less willing to cooperate with the FBI and or with, you know, federal law enforcement and return the documents. And that's kind of their justification. But that's, you know, that's another example of something like this. I think it's hard. To, it's hard to say for sure, but it seems like we may have never had anything happen regardless if some of these documents hadn't been published. And Senator Grassley is, you know, he's a longtime House Judiciary or a Senate Judiciary chairman. He is not some partisan Trump era um, member who came in as a, he's not an America first pick. He's been in the Senate for a very long time. He's very respected. He's one of the most respected members in the Senate. And so this is not just um, kind of the, the F- Freedom Caucus or some Trump Republican, you know, two or three dozen Republicans trying to make something happen here. I mean, if Chuck Grassley is releasing these documents and saying something's wrong, that even within Washington, that's a pretty big deal because um, Grassley is really respected. He's not some what someone could write off as a, a far right person, even though he is, you know, he is a Republican. Um, so I think this is getting more steam. And the, because these documents are being made public, people who wanted to say something uh, can actually have something to point to now, because we've been hearing for a long time from lawmakers that all this, you know, Burisma and, and Hunter Biden and this document. But now that it's made public, you can read it for yourself. And uh, you can trust it. It's not just partisan, you know, partisanship. It's real. So it's going to increase the pr- um, pressure on the DOJ. Practically, who knows what's going to happen to Hunter and the president? I think what it does practically, though, is it gives um, Trump some cover because, you know, he's facing a lot of his own legal problems, which are threatening his own campaign. I mean, in some ways they've propelled this campaign, but they could also threaten it. And I think he has a really good case at this point to say, look how unfairly I've been treated. The DOJ is totally corrupt. Look, they didn't go after this Burisma stuff. They well, let's under a sweetheart deal, and now they're coming after me. In, in the couple minutes we have left, let's talk about those uh, the the IRS whistleblowers who testified before Congress this week, specifically about the Department of Justice. What what they said was pushback. Plus, and, and there also was a, a new monetary figure that was put out there during this congressional hearing about how much money the Bidens may have received. Right. Yeah. The, the whistleblower hearing was really interesting. Again, talking about credibility, these are two guys who've been at the IRS a long time across multiple administrations, combined uh, 27 years of experience. Right. So these are IRS, you know, lifers, you could say. And they laid out a lot of the details that maybe have kind of been missing from some of this investigation. And they, they tallied up $17 million that came to the Biden family and their business associates, which I think the centersquare.com, we were one of the first people to report this, but the previous number had been something like at least 10 million. But now we have on the record, it's 17 million. And the way that James Comer, the House Oversight Chairman, he describes it, he says there's about 20 shell companies from 2014 to 2019 connected to the Biden family and their business partners. And this money would go into these companies and kind of get moved around to hide it, right? Which is not, you know, not uncommon for if this really is some kind of uh, scheme like that. The money came from you know, Ukrainian sources, Chinese, Romanian, uh, to the tune of 17 million. And so the IRS whistleblowers, I mean, there's so much there, but they laid out some of the, the specific numbers and they both testified that they felt Hunter Biden received some kind of preferential treatment and there was an abuse of power in the investigation to favor Hunter Biden. We will continue to follow this story at thecentersquare.com, but we are out of time. For Casey Harper, I'm Dan McCaleb. Thank you for listening and please subscribe.